everybody. My name is Allison Ostrander, and I am the Director of Risk Tolerance here at Simpler Trading. And in today's video, I want to talk about a potential earnings trade to take on Microsoft. Now, we've just started going into earnings seasons, and I know a lot of you guys like to play trades to potentially hold through the announcement due to sometimes the unexpected moves that can occur and the volatility that can occur from the news itself. Um, and one of the strategies that I really like to use here around earnings announcement comes from the compound butterfly strategy. And actually, Earlier this week, if you had joined me over in the options room or if you were in the small account mentorship, you would have heard me give two different trade ideas using this strategy, both on Netflix and on Tesla. And had you taken those trade ideas on Netflix or Tesla, they would have worked out beautifully. You can see here on Netflix, we had a strong gap to the downside of follow through lower today, right into support levels. So a very nice volatile move to play lower. And then same thing with Tesla over here. If you had taken the trade idea that I highlighted on Tesla using the compound butterfly strategy, it too would have allowed for a very nice profit due to the gap down and once again that follow through as we go down and test supports here lower into the end of the week. And so because of that, I want to make sure to highlight to all of you guys the trade idea to consider around Microsoft. Now, first and foremost, before we dive into the charts and the trade idea, I do first want to point out that any capital risk that you put out there going into an earnings announcement, especially if it's short dated, like the trade idea we're going to look at, you need to be okay losing 100% of your capital risk, which means the capital risk that you put out there should be well within your risk tolerance. And the reason why is even though Netflix and Tesla worked out beautifully, we still don't know how it could have happened, right? There's still always that uncertainty around the news. Sometimes earnings rem remarks, right, have a mediocre market reaction where nothing quite happens and things kind of remain flat and stay within the range. Other times the market's very happy about what is said, like we saw with Carvana and it has a huge spike to the upside. Or sometimes it disappoints, right? And the market doesn't like that. And very much like Netflix and Tesla, we have a gap and a pullback move lower. So just be mindful that, you know, those are obviously usually the three market reactions you get around an earnings announcement. And therefore, it can be a little bit unpredictable. So please, as we walk through this trade idea, be mindful of your risk. Now, that being said, though, Let's go through the charts here and see how earnings announcements have worked in the past for Microsoft. Here, we ended up having a nice gap to the upside. Going into the close that day, we closed around 275. Then the earnings announcement happened. The next day, we worked our way up to a high of 299. So a nice volatile bounce to the upside. Here, off this earnings announcement, we closed the day around 242, ended up seeing a low uh, down to 230 the next day. Uh, obviously, that bounce did held, bouncing back up into the close. But you can see that initial reaction caused some volatility for a move lower initially. Here off this earnings, we closed the day going into the announcement around 250. And the next day, we drop down to a low of around 230. So a stronger point move to the downside, taking us back down to test support levels. And then finally, off of this earnings here, we close the day going into the announcement around 251. The next day, we had a nice spike to the upside, taking us to 270. And then, of course, you can see for the remainder of that week, it tried to continue a bit higher overall in the trend. So. That being said, if we take into consideration how Microsoft has moved the last several earnings, getting a little bit of that volatility, whether it's short-lived like it was back off of this earnings announcement right back in January, or whether it's a bigger move that lasts into a trend move like we saw in the last earnings, either way, volatility usually peaks through 
on Microsoft earnings announcements, which means it could be a great contender for the compound butterfly strategy. So let me go ahead and pull up the option chain and we can walk through what this strategy is. So here is Microsoft on the option chain. As you can see, for this strategy, personally, I'd use next week's expiration. And even though we're walking through this trade idea, guys, keep in mind, normally I would not put on this trade idea until probably the day of the announcement. The reason why is because there's still time for Microsoft to move going into the news. And I usually like to have this strategy placed on um, wherever that closing price is going into the news event itself and then playing off the volatility that moves. So keep in mind, if Microsoft moves lower or if it bounces up, you might wanna adjust the strike levels accordingly and then look to implement this trade idea into the announcement itself. Now, that being said, next week's expiration, of course, encompasses the earnings announcement, and the anticipated range is about 19 points. So the specific compound butterfly strategy that I like to use off of earnings when I'm playing volatility is the broken wing debit butterfly strategy. And what I'll look to do is put that not only on the call side, but on the put side. This way, we don't care which way the market reaction is, if it's positive or negative. All we're looking for is that higher probability that we could get a volatile move around the announcement within roughly the anticipated range. So right now we're trading right around 346, 347, basically. Um, if we were to get roughly a 20 point move lower or higher, right, that's basically right within that anticipated range. So let's go ahead and price this out and say this is where we're at going into the close before the announcement occurs. So a 20 point move higher would put us around 367. Now you can see there's quite a bit of open interest on the option chain at 365, as well as around 370. So it doesn't seem like a bad spot to try and encompass. So let's start building a butterfly out around this range. Now, like I mentioned, what I like to look for is a debit broken wing butterfly. This way, if we get a stronger than anticipated move and it takes our spread completely in the money, it still builds in a forgiveness factor to allow that profit potential, which is great for the potential vol volatility around earnings. So normally I go with something like a 10-5 width spread, but I have a feeling that's gonna be a little bit more than the risk tolerance I wanna put on this trade. Um, not too bad, actually. Let's let's actually just move this down a strike level. So let's go with the 360, 370, 375. You can see that cost basis is currently around $1.48 for the call side of this trade idea. It allows a max profit potential of 852. And then, of course, if it did end up going completely in the money, it still allows for a profit of basically around 352. So not a bad risk versus reward. But remember what I talked about in the beginning. We don't know which way the market is going to react to this. All we're doing is really playing off the idea that we'll get some sort of volatile move either within or greater than the anticipated range. So that means we also want to go ahead and price out the put side. So. Now let's go over here. Roughly a 20 point move lower would be taking us down right around to 325 basically. Um, so once again, let's keep the spread width the same on the put side. We'll look for a 10 point spread width on the debit spread, a five point spread width on the credit spread of the butterfly, and ooh, a little bit richer on the put side. So maybe they're already kind of pricing in the market makers a potential pullback on this move. Um, there's one of the two things you could look to do if it starts to get a little bit higher than the risk tolerance you're looking for. You could either narrow the spread down or we could set our option strikes maybe a little lower. So in this case, I am going to attempt to move them just a little bit lower to the downside. Let's try the 330, 320, 315 for our strike levels. That still encompasses roughly the 18, the 20 point move lower 
if we are to see that happen around the earnings announcement, right, where it stays within that anticipated range, it's just at the top or bottom of that range. Um, you can see here it's about a dollar thirty eight cost basis, certainly not bad. So let me go ahead and pull over my calculator so you guys have a real idea of what the capital risk versus reward is on this trade setup. So the first trade right on the call side was around a dollar forty eight on the mark, right? So we pay a dollar forty eight, let's say on the call side. Right now, the mark on the put butterfly is a dollar thirty seven. So our total risk on this trade idea is about two eighty five. Now, once again, if you hold this trade through the announcement, and let's say Microsoft has a zero reaction, it remains flat. You have to be okay losing this capital risk. If you're not, please, and you still want to participate in the trade idea. Consider narrowing the spread on each side. Instead of doing a 10-5 butterfly, which is what I typically like to do, you could look at doing a 7.5 width, 2.5 width butterfly to help reduce that cost. You could do a 5 and 2.5 width to keep that cost lower. The idea, though, is the total net debit that you pay between both trades, you want it to be less than what the value would be if the spread goes completely in the money. So let's continue to walk through the 10, five trade idea on this butterfly specifically. So our total risk is 285. Well, that means if one side or the other pins going into that expiration that week by our short strike, whether it's on the call or put side, our max profit potential is 715. It covers the risk on the butterfly that's completely out of the money and still nets us an overall profit. So not a bad risk first reward there, certainly. If it goes completely in the money, because Microsoft has a bigger move than anticipated, right? It moves past roughly the 20 point range that we're looking for then you still have a forgiveness factor on this trade because if a debit broken wing butterfly goes completely in the money and it's set up as a 10 point spread width on the debit spread and a five point spread width on the credit spread, it will settle for $5. Five, of course, taking into consideration our cost basis of 285 still allows for a 215 profit potential. So once again, it would still cover the risk on the spread that's completely out of the money and still keep us overall net ahead. That's that nice forgiveness factor built into debit broken wing butterflies. So certainly not a bad risk versus reward. Really quickly, if you like the trade idea, but like I said, you want to be mindful of your risk, narrow down those spreads. Let's just really quickly price out a five, 2.5 with spread here on the put side. It's around a just shy of a 70 cent cost basis. So we'll just round it up and say we paid 70 cents for the put butterfly, still within that 20 point range like we discussed for that pin. And then let's go ahead and price out the call side. The call side, once again, if we go roughly 20 points higher, we're around 367.50. If we go with the 362.50 strike, 370. Once again, that's a five point width on the debit spread, 2.5 on the credit spread. You can see that's about a dollar six, or I'm sorry, not a dollar 62. It's a 62 cent cost basis on the mark. So in total, you're paying about a dollar 32. Now, once again, if you can settle right around your pin strike on one side or the other going into the close that week, your max profit potential is. 368. Once again, not a bad risk versus reward there. If it goes completely in the money, you know this butterfly itself would be worth around 250 because 5 minus 250 is 250. Once again, we take into consideration our cost basis around $1.32, and it still leaves a $1.18 profit potential. So once again, not a bad risk versus reward. And obviously here with the smaller spread width, you can keep that risk maybe more within your risk tolerance to hold through the earnings announcement itself. Now, like I said, this trade idea, when we walked through it in the small account mentorship and in the options room, worked out beautifully this week. Doesn't mean Microsoft will work out the same way, but if it sees similar moves to what it's done in the past, then there's a good chance that this could work out and by putting it on both sides, you don't necessarily have to be right about which direction it's going to go. All you have to be right about is that possibility of a gap 
and volatile move in your favor. And so if this strategy is something that you are interested in, if you like the concept that I'm showing here of how you can really reduce your capital risk, but still allow yourself some great profit potentials, please feel free to come join us uh, next Wednesday at 7 for a free webinar that both myself, John Carter, and Cody Ashmore are doing, where we talk about some of the pitfalls that newer and more experienced traders fall into when trying to grow an account, as well as ways that you can be mindful of your risk when doing so in order to grow small accounts. And I'll have that link in the description below. Um, Thank you once again, guys, so much for joining me. I hope to see y'all on the free webinar Wednesday. As always, may the trade be with you, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Bye, guys. Hey, Allison Ostrander here, Director of Risk Tolerance at Simpler Trading. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and comment down below to help us out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you can get notified when we release our next video. And if you want to watch us trade in real time using our own money, go to simplertrading.com to learn how to sign up. As always, may the trade be with you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.